Okay, good morning everyone. Today you are going to have a lecture, talk, uh, a lecture regarding the developments of the vertebral column. So this is the lecture topic for today's lecture. Okay, the, regarding the development of the vertebral column. Okay, I hope you enjoy this lecture topics. Thank you. Okay, from this picture, as you can see here, in the middle part, the blue color part here, it represents the axial skeleton. So in the middle here we have the vertebral column, we have the chest, okay, and then we have the, the other bones that, uh, that form the axial skeleton. Okay, now we're going to move further uh, to discuss on the stages in the development of the vertebral column. Okay, uh, there are three stages uh, for the development of the vertebral columns okay the first stage is a mesenchymal stage that happened at four weeks of embryo and then a second stage is a cartilaginous stage that happened at six weeks of embryo and the third stage is a bony stage that happened at eight weeks of embryo okay this is the cut sections of the embryo that we're going further the uh, ingrain We'll further discuss after this, no need to worry on this picture. But if, uh, just to show you that you know, here in the middle, we have the neural tubes, okay? And then here we have a somite, okay? And then we have the lateral plate here, okay? Okay, uh, just to show you the same picture that I have shown you just now, but in the bigger view, okay? Uh, the par axial mesoderms from uh, par axial mesoderms, okay, uh, <clears throat> somite. So it is divided into okay, par axial mesoderm somite is divided into two parts dermo myotome, okay, this is the dermo myotome, okay, and then uh, here we have the sclerotome, okay, this is the, the par axial mesoderm somite, which is divided into to the myotome and the sclerotome. And then uh, for intermediate mesoderm, so here this is the intermediate mesoderm, and the lateral pad mesoderm, this is the lateral pad mesoderm. Okay? Okay, during, okay, in mesenchymal stage, the sclerotomes, okay, the sclerotome, this is the sclerotome, the sclerotomes are found around the notochord, okay? The sclerotome can be found around the notochord. If you see here, this is the what? And this is the notochord, okay? Uh, so it's around the, uh, uh, surround the notochord. And the sclerotome also uh, can be found surrounding the neural tube. So you can see here, it surround the neural tube, right? Okay, this is the neural tube, the blue color uh, circle here, actually it's a neural tube. Okay, and also the body wall. Okay, so this is the area that you can find the sclerotome. Okay. Okay, just to show you the same picture. Okay, the neural tube. Okay, the sclerotome the extension of the sclerotome where it actually it uh, can be found around the notochord and also the surround the neural tube. Okay, the sclerotome. Okay, now we're going to focus on this uh, stage, the mesenchymal stage that happened at fourth week of embryo. Okay, in fourth week of embryo, okay, during the fourth week of embryo, the sclerotome, okay, the sclerotome appears as a pair condensation of a mesenchymal cells, okay, around the notochord. If you see here, this rod, okay, this is the rod, right? Okay, uh, this rod is a notochord. Okay, the sclerotome appear as a pair condensation. Okay, this is the sclerotome. You see here, okay, we have a pair condensation, right? That represents a, a different color. Okay, the pair condensation. Okay, uh, of the mesenchymal cells around the notochord. Okay, okay, we, we have pair. Okay, you can see here on the on the right side and also on the left uh, on the each side right on the each on each side sorry on each side we have the uh, sclerotome okay pair and then uh, each sclerotome consists of the loosely arranged cell okay if you see here 
it is consists of two okay loosely arranged uh, cell that is located cranially so the the lighter color pink here uh, it represent the loosely okay arranged cell uh, that move toward the head or cranially okay cranially is move is actually uh, closest to the head okay move toward the head and dense pack, the dense pack mesenchymal cells uh, that uh, located caudally, okay, move toward the tail. Even though the human don't have a tail, but it's move toward the, uh, move away from the head. Lah. It's better uh, for you for your information for your understanding. It's better to say like that. Lah. It's move toward the head. Uh, toward toward not toward the head, but it's toward. Oh, it is move away from the head. Sorry, okay. The dense pack mesenchymal cell is moving away from the head. Okay, caudally. Okay, cranially is moving toward the head. Okay, but caudally is uh, moving away from the head. Okay, toward the tail. Okay, so we have two color. Okay, the lighter color pinks and also the uh, dark color pinks. Yeah. Okay, the loosely arranged cells and densely packed mesenchymal cells. Okay. Uh, some densely packed cells move cranially. Okay. Some densely packed cells uh, uh, move uh, cranially opposite the center of the myotome and form the intervertebral disc. Okay. Some of the uh, these densely packed cells is uh, it moving uh, uh, cranially. Okay, it's moving cranially. Some of the this uh, densely packed cell is moving cranially, moving toward the head. Okay, opposite the center of myotome. Okay, uh, and form the intervertebral disc. Okay, so as you can see from this picture, okay, you can see here where is the intervertebral disc. Okay, this is the intervertebral disc. Okay. Okay, where is the opposite the center of the myotome? So this is the myotome, lah, the, the opposite the center of myotome here. So it moving uh, beyond uh, opposite the center of myotome lah, and form the intervertebral disc. So you can see here, this is the intervertebral disc that being formed by the densely some of the densely densely packed cell that move cranially. Okay. Okay, intervertebral disc. Okay. And then the remaining densely packed cell fuse with the loosely arranged cells of immediately caudal stratums to form a mesenchymal centrum. Okay, the remaining okay some of the uh, the densely packed it moving uh, toward cranially okay opposite the center of myotome right and some of uh, some of the densely packed here it uh, it fuse with the loosely Arrange of the immediate the caudal stratum. It means that this one will fuse with this one. So that's why you can see the, the color here. This one, this one, and this one, this one. Okay, right? You can see this one is this one, and, and this one is this one. Okay. So okay, the remaining of the densely packed cell with, uh, will fuse with loosely arranged cells of the immediate the caudal stratum. Uh, caudal stratum. Uh, this is the caudal. Uh, loosely uh, arranged uh, sclerotome. Okay, this is the caudal loosely arranged sclerotome. This one will combine this one. Okay, to form the mesenchymal centrum. So this is the mesenchymal centrum. Okay, so far okay. I hope you can uh, you can understand how that the sclerotome is moving is moving. Okay, okay. Some of the or some of the densely Pack cells is moving sir. opposite the the center of the myotome here. It forms the intervertebral disc, and then some of the densely dense uh, densely packed mesenchymal cell here is moving toward uh, caudally and fused with the loosely arranged cell here. It forms the uh, mesenchymal mesenchymal. So that's why you can see the color here. This one it represents this one, and this one it represents this one. Okay. Okay. What is the mesenchymal centrum? Mesenchymal centrum is a primordium of the body of the vertebra. Okay, this is the uh, centrum, and it is a primordium of the body of the vertebra. Okay. 
Okay. Each centrum, okay, each centrum, okay, each centrum, it develops from the two adjacent scrotum of both sides. Yeah, definitely, each centrum here, it develops from the two adjacent scrotum of both sides. Uh, this one, uh, this fuse, this one, right? So, it, uh, it developed from the two adjacent uh, scrotum from both sides. Okay, from both sides. Lah. Okay. Okay here this one and then from both side okay and then the nerve now lie in close relationship with the intervertebral disc okay so you can see here the nerve here lie yeah, in close relationships with the intervertebral disc okay and then the intersegmental arteries lie on each side of the vertebral bodies okay so you can see here the disc artery okay it lie huh? Uh, on each side of the vertebral body. Okay. And then uh, the notochord. Uh, the notochord degenerate. Okay. The notochord, this is the notochord, right? In the middle, the cylinder structure here, the notochord. The notochord will be degenerate. You can see here, it will degenerate, right? The centrum here. Except when there are some portion that notochord will be uh, uh, retained. Okay. So this part, uh, here, it will be written here in the region of the intervertebral disc where this notochord will form the nucleus pulposus. Okay, the nucleus pulposus. Okay, the part the notochord written. And this nucleus uh, is surrounded by the circularly arranged huh? annulus fibrosus. The yellow color structure here, it represents the annulus fibrosus. Okay. The dark color uh, the dark color brown here it represents the nucleus pulposus. Okay. And the nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosus together it will form the intervertebral disc. Okay. It's very easy, right? Okay. Okay, this is the mesenchymal stage that happened at the four weeks of embryo. Okay, this is the uh, picture just to show you the same picture that I have shown you just now. You can see here the biggest image. Okay, how it happens on screen. So this is the, actually the different view. Okay, the different view. Okay, so you can see here this is the what the neural tube, right? This is the neural tube. So this is uh, happened at the four peaks of embryo. So you can see here this is the notochord that we have, uh, and then whenever it uh from four week to fifth week, so we have the here. You can see here the condensation of the skeletal cells okay that uh, happen sir, uh, around the neural tube uh, there is a condensation of the skeletal cells uh, around the neural tubes uh, happen at four or three weeks of embryo, embryo where the the centrum okay the centrum okay this uh, the centrum is already is already being formed okay Okay, you can see here the centrum is already being formed. Okay, through the condensation of the skeletal cell. Okay. Okay, the formation of the intervertebral disc. So you can see here this is the intervertebral <laughs> intervertebral disc. Okay, this is the in the at the periphery here in, <coughs> is uh, annulus fibrosus. In the center here uh, is a nucleus pulposus, and it, actually the nucleus pulposus is the remnant of the notochord. Uh, Okay, the remnant of the notochord, the remaining part of the notochord, and it's actually it's a gel, jelly-like and soft. Okay, this part in the middle here is a jelly-like and soft. Okay, we still uh, in the during uh, we are still in the mesenchymal stage uh, at the fourth peak of embryo, embryo still at this, at this stage, mesenchymal stage. Okay. During this stage, the mesenchymal cells surrounding the neural tube, okay, mesenchymal stage surrounding the neural tubes form the vertebral arch. Okay, okay, mesenchymal uh, mesenchymal cell surrounded the surrounding the neural tubes form the uh, vertebral or neural arch. Neural arch. So you can see here, this is the mesenchymal cell that surround the neural tube. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So, uh, if you see here, this picture, right? Okay, you can see here. This is the mesenchymals uh, uh, cells that surround the neural tubes that later will form the neural arch. Okay. This is the uh, mesenchymal cells uh, or condensation of the sclerotomes uh, that uh, actually uh, also surround the neural tubes that form the, uh, the centrums, uh, the, okay, the primordium of the vertebra. Okay, so the mesenchymal cells that surround the, the, the neural tubes will form the vertebral or neural arch. Okay. Okay. And then the mesenchymal cells in the body wall, hmm, mesenchymal cells in the body wall, okay, mesenchymal cells in the body wall form the costal process hmm, that form the ribs in the thoracic region. Okay. Okay, mesenchymal cells in the body wall form the Coastal process that form the ribs in the thoracic region. So you can see here, this is the centrum. Okay, so the this one, right, right? The condensation of the skeletal cells. Okay, okay, this one, right, from here to here. So it form the uh, the centrum, right? Okay, this is the centrum. Okay, the primordium of the uh, vertebra column. Okay, okay, this is the Centrum, okay, the primordium of the vertebral column, okay. Okay, now we're going to move uh, on to the next stage, the cartilaginous stage of the vertebral columns development, okay. Okay, uh, the cartilaginous stage of the vertebral columns development happened during the six weeks, huh? okay. So during the six weeks. Huh? the quantification center start to appear, okay? The quantification center start to appear in each mesenchymal vertebra. So you can see here the blue color part here represent the quantification center, okay? This quantification center start to appear lah, in each mesenchymal vertebra. Two center in each centrum, two center in each centrum, one, two, two center in each centrum. Fuse at the end of the embryonic period to form a cartilaginous centrum. Okay, it will fuse, and these two centers will fuse, uh, uh, will be fused at the end of the embryonic period to form a cartilaginous period. Okay, it will fuse to form a cartilaginous centrum. Okay, initially, this one is a mesenchymal, mesenchymal centrum. Okay, this is the mesenchymal centrum, okay, the primordium of the vertebra. Okay. But later, this one will be replaced. This one will become bigger, bigger in size, and then fuse uh, from the cartilaginous, cartilaginous center. Okay. And then center in the vertebral arch. Okay. Center in the vertebral arch. Okay. Uh, will fuse each other. Will fuse each other. It will, be, it will be expand. This blue color structure will be expanding. Okay. And then it will also, uh, uh, and then it also fuse with the uh, the center in the centrum, okay. Spinous and transverse process, okay. The spinous process and the transverse process uh, develop from the extension of the quantification center in the uh, vertebral arch, okay. Okay, just now we have discussed on the cartilaginous stage of the vertebral development, okay. Uh, how about the bony stage? Okay, the bony stage of the vertebral development. Okay, uh, the ossifications, uh, this is the involved the ossification, uh, this is the quantification, okay, this is the bony development, ossification. Okay, ossification of the typical vertebra ha happens uh, or occur uh, during the embryonic period and usually end by the 25th year of age, okay, begin during, during the embryonic period and usually end at the age of 25 years old, okay. Okay, there are two primary ossification center. Okay, two primary ossification center, ventral and dorsal. Okay, for the centrum. Okay, there are two primary ossification center. Okay, ventral part and dorsal part. Okay, okay, this most probably can be a, a ventral or dorsal. Can be ventral or dorsal. Okay, okay, this is the one ossification center. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, just to uh, to 
I'll correct my word. Okay. This is the ventral. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. This is the ventral part, ventral ossification center. And this is the dorsal ossification center. So we have two. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So just to correct my words here. Okay. This uh, we have two primary ossification center here. This is number one. This is number one ossification center. This is the ventral. This is the dorsal ossification center. Okay. Okay, I hope you can uh, follow my uh, my uh, explanation here. Okay, so I have correct my words here. Okay, here this is the uh, the ventral ossification center, and this is the dorsal ossification center. We have two. Okay, we have two ossification center here, and the uh, for the centrum. Okay, for the centrum. Okay, uh, and then. Uh, this primary ossification center will fuel, uh, soon fuse to form one center. Okay, later it will fuse together to form one center. Lah. Okay, the vertebral, uh, sorry, the ventral ossification center, the dorsal ossification center will be fused together. You can see here, it will fuse together to form one center. Uh, to form you know, right now, it's become one already. Lah. Okay, okay. Initially, it's, it has two. Lah. Okay, we have the ventral one and then we have the dorsal. Okay, and then it fuse together to form a one center. Okay, and then <laughs> there are three primary center. Okay, three primary center are present uh, present by end of embryonic period. Okay, there are three primary center center. Okay, presence. Okay, there are three primary center presence by the end of the embryonic, uh, embryonic periods. One center in the centrum. Okay, initially you had two, but it later it fused. Okay, ventral and dorsal will be fused together to form one center. Okay, and then one in each half of the vertebral arch. Uh, you can see here. So this is the vertebral arch, right? Vertebral arch or neural arch that we have discussed before, right? So once uh, in each uh, vertebral arch. Okay, so right now we have three ossifications. Uh, we have three primary center. Okay, primary ossification center. Okay, ossifications in the vertebral arch, uh, uh, sorry. ossification in the vertebral arches. Okay, the ossification in the vertebral arches. Uh, it uh, happen at at weeks of embryonic period. Okay, and at birth, uh, each vertebra consists of three bony part. Okay, at birth, at birth, uh, each vertebra consists of three bony part. Okay, connected by the cartil cartilage. Okay, okay, this cartilage. Uh, is actually the neurocentral joint. Okay, this cartilage hmm, from the neurocentral joint. You can see here this is neurocentral joint. This is another neurocentral joint. So at birth, so we have uh, uh, three bony part. Okay, one, two, and three. The centrum. Okay, two vertebral arch. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we have two two vertebral arch. And then uh, connected by the uh, cartilage. So we have the neurocentral joint here. This is the cartilage. Okay. And then here, cartilage. And then the cartilage. Okay. Then that connect uh, this three body part. Here. Okay. And the vertebral arch fuse, uh, the vertebral arch, okay, the vertebral arch here will fuse at the age of three to five years old. Okay. Okay. This is the primary ossification center. Okay, this is the primary ossification center. Okay, now we're going to discuss further. Okay, regarding the body stage of the vertebral developments. Okay, here right now we are focusing on the secondary ossification center five. Okay, right now we have five ossification center that appear after puberty. Okay, the first one uh, you can find at the tip. You can find at the tips of the spinous process, and then we can find uh, two. At the tips of the each transverse process, one, two, okay, one. Right now we have one, two, three, right? Okay, and then two annular epiphyses on the superior, okay, on the superior here, and then on the inferior rim of the vertebral body, okay, superior rim and inferior rims of the vertebral body, okay. Okay, all secondary secondary center. Okay, secondary center will unite with the rest of the vertebra 
around five, 25 year, uh, years of age. Okay. Exception to the typical ossification of vertebra occur in Atlas. Okay. Axis uh, and C7, lumbar vertebra, secret, and coccyx. Okay. So this, this is exception, exception of to the uh, typical ossification of the vertebra. Uh, because this vertebra, C1, C2, C7, okay, and the remaining part, uh, it has a, a it, it, it uh, each, uh, their shapes is different, okay. So the ossification center might be slightly different, okay. Okay, the uh, the uh, the ossifications slightly. Okay, uh, just to uh, mm, to review back on my words here. Okay, all the secondary center unite with the rest of the vertebra. Okay, around the twenty five years of age, but they are exception. Okay, exception to the. Uh, exception to the typical ossification of the vertebra occur in the C1, C2, okay? C7 and lumbar vertebra, vertebra, sacrum and coccyx, exception to the typical ossification of vertebra, okay? Exception to the typical ossifications of vertebra, okay, this is the exception, exception to the typical ossification of vertebra occur in the atlas, C2, C7, Lumbar vertebra, sacrum, and coccyx. Because this vertebra, okay, their shapes is different, okay, slightly different from the the typical one, okay. So there is exceptions here, okay. The exception to the typical subdivision of vertebra, vertebra lah, okay, that have uh, happened at the C one, C two, C seven, lumbar vertebra, sacrum, and coccyx. Because the shape of this vertebra column is different from the typical type of vertebra. This kind of vertebra is actually is the typical one, the typical type of vertebra. But here, the C one, C two, C seven, lumbar vertebra, sacrum, and coccyx, the sh the shape is different from this vertebra, the typical one. Okay, so it is. Uh, means that mm, this kind of uh, typical ossifications uh, is slightly uh, exception. Uh, ex uh, this one is not happen here, lah, yeah? in the C1, C2, C7, and the lumbar vertebra, and the remaining sacrums, and also the scopsic. So this is the exceptions uh, to the typical ossifications of the vertebra. Okay. Okay. Okay, this picture just to show you the how the the process of the uh, happen okay at the vertebral arch here the processes okay the neural uh, the neural arch okay the point and then also the uh, the processes what are the processes that happen at the uh, at the vertebral arch okay or neural arch okay. So uh, this is the cervical region, okay? So at the cervical region here, we have the dorsal true transverse element, okay, represented by this part. And then we have the costal elements uh, uh, on the ventral portions uh, represented by this part, okay? So you can see here, this part will be extended here, okay? The dorsal true transverse element will be extended here. And this part, okay, will be extended here. And whenever it will, extended here this part and this part okay it will form the foramen transversarium okay foramen transversarium okay so this is the hall you can see here it's a, it's a hall so yeah, you can see here this is, is the the vertebra and the cervical regions okay so you can see here there is a hole here okay this is the Foramen transversarium. This is how actually this process is happen. Okay, at the uh, vertebral arch. Okay, where it involves the extension of the dorsal two transverse elements and also the uh, costal element on the vertebral portions. Okay. Okay. So you can see here there is a ventral uh, costal element. Okay, and then dorsals. Uh, 
two transverse elements. And then later it will unite to form a uh, to form a hole here in center. Okay. So uh, here we have the transverse element. Okay, transverse element means that this transverse element is actually is from the uh, the vertebral arch here. Okay. The, from the transverse process lah, the processes. Okay. But here it from the costal element. Okay, from the costal element. Okay. Okay, in the thoracic regions. Okay, we also have the uh, transverse element and the costal element. Okay, transverse element from the uh, this part. Okay, the, the, the from the vertebral arch. Okay, but the costal element here, you can see here the costal element. It will form the rib. Okay, it form the rib. Okay, you can see here, this is the rib. The costal element will form the rib, but here in the cervical region here it does not have a rib, right? Okay, it will combine and join with the uh, those are two transverse element to form a this one. Okay, the foramen in the this structure, the, the foramen transversarium. Okay. Okay. Rib, and then in the lumbar region. Okay, in the lumbar region. Okay, we have the two elements also, the true transverse element and also the costal element. Okay, we don't have the ribs in the number region, right? Okay, so this costal element will join the fuse with the uh, true transverse element, so it will become extended, okay, become longer. Okay, you can see here it become longer, more prominent huh? transverse process. Okay. Mm. So the transverse process, and also the uh, the two transverse element. Okay, uh, the 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 transverse process. Sorry, the tram, uh, the sorry uh, the transverse process. The costal element. Okay, it will be, be formed by the costal element. Okay, the just I uh, want to correct my word here. Okay, the transverse process here. The transverse process lah. It formed by the costal element. Sorry, I want to correct my word here. The transverse process here it formed by the transverse uh, by the transverse process formed by the costal element. Okay, but the true transverse element here it formed by the uh, accessory uh, true transverse element will form the accessory process. Okay, sorry, I try to correct my correct my words. Okay, the true transverse element will form the accessory process and the costal element will form the transverse process okay just to correct my words here okay the true transverse element because these these two part will join together okay the true transverse element and the costal element will join together okay the true transverse elements will form the accessory process so this is the accessory process this one the smaller one okay accessory process okay this one, uh, not this one, uh, not this one, sorry. This one, okay? Not this one, not this one, not this one, okay? This one, small. This is the accessory process. And the, uh, this accessory process formed by the two transverse elements. And the costal element will form the transverse process, this one. So this one will be fused together lah, and then form these two structures, okay? This is the, the corrected part that I want to highlight here, okay? Okay? Okay, the true transverse element from the accessory process, the costal element will form the transverse process. Okay, so this is the corrected part. So I hope you can follow. Okay, what I am saying right now. Okay, what I'm explain right now. Okay, the corrected part. Okay, the true transverse element will form the accessory process. The costal element will form the transverse process. Okay, this one will join together to form these two structure. Okay, at the lumbar region. Okay, this is the lumbar vertebra. Okay, no, this is not the accessory process. Huh? Sorry, eh? it's now uh, the, uh, maybe uh, the error slightly not correct just now. Okay, so this one is the accessory process. Okay, and not only that, uh, the true transverse element also form then the mammalian process. Okay. It also form the mammillary process. So mean that the true transverse element also form this 
two, accessory process and the mammary process. Okay. Okay, so where is the mammary process? Okay, mammary process here at the tips here. Okay, then the, the smaller one. Okay, that is the mammary process. Okay. Okay, at the tip here, we have the mammary process. Okay, so this is the accessory process. This is the mammary process. At the tip, at the tip, at the tip here, we have the mammary process. So the true thymus element form the accessory process, mammary process. Okay, now we're going to move to the sacral region. Okay, so the uh, the pink color part here, it, uh, it represents the costal element. Okay. So here it formed the okay the butterfly shape part here okay it formed the lateral mass okay it will form the lateral mass okay In the sacral region it will form the uh, uh, lateral mass this part the true thymus element will fuse with the uh, costal element from the lateral mass okay so I hope you can follow lah, all the process here. Okay, from early part of my slide here. Okay, the cervical region. Okay. Okay. I hope you can follow. Huh? Okay. Hmm. This actually happened. Okay. So, so we have finished discussing about the developments of the vertebral columns. Now we're going to the clinical point of the this lecture. Okay. There are some uh uh, some component of uh, in, in, uh, the clinical component that is important in this lecture that you have to know. Okay, the first one is regarding the spina bifida. Okay, this spina bifida is due to the failure of fusions of the half of the vertebral arch. Okay, this condition is contributed by the failure of fusions of the half of the vertebral arch. So you can see here, half of the vertebral arch is uh, failed to fuse. Okay. So we have two we have the we have two type of uh, spina bifida. We have the spina bifida occulta, okay, and spina bifida cystica. And then spina bifida cystica is further divided into two, the meningeal cell, okay. This is the meningeal cell, and then meningeal myelocell, okay. Okay, meningeal cell, only meninges is protruding out, and for the meningeal myelocell, both the the, 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 the spinal cord and also the uh, meninges is protruding out. Okay. Uh, the cystica, it forms the cyst. Lah, cyst. And then occulta uh, is covered by the skin here. Okay. It's not obvious. Huh? It's not obvious. Okay. And the other conditions is uh, associated with the rachisis. Okay. Due to the uh, cleft of the vertebral column where this condition is contributed by the this one due to the neural fall fail to fuse so you can see here this is the neural tissue that fell to fuse okay and then the third condition is clipel fail syndrome okay brevicolysis uh, brevicolysis sorry brevicolysis okay uh, brevicolysis uh, okay uh, this clipel field syndromes is uh, is characterized by short neck, low hairline, and restricted neck movements. Okay, uh, this is due to the number of cervical vertebral body is less than normal. Okay, so this is the conditions. Okay, it is due to the number of cervical vertebral body is less than normal, and then we have the hemi vertebra. Is due to the failure of one codification to appear and the subsequent failure of the half of the vertebra to form. So, this defect will produce a scoliosis. Okay, and you, I hope you know what is the scoliosis. This scoliosis is quite common, it happens. Huh? Scoliosis, uh, the lateral curvature of the vertebral column. Okay, the, the scoliosis the, is due to the hemi vertebra. Okay. And then the other congenital anomalies that you have to know is uh, accessory ribs. The lumbar ribs usually cause no problems. Accessory ribs can happen at the lumbar ribs, but usually cause no problem. But uh, cervical ribs occur in 0.5% to 1% of people. A cervical rib is attached to the servant's cervical vertebra. 
and maybe unit unilaterals or maybe bilaterals. Okay. And then uh, if this this cervical risk uh, happens, uh, it will cause a pressure on the cervical uh, the pressure on the cervical ribs on the brachial plexus. Uh, okay, pressure on this uh, of a cervical ribs on the brachial plexus or subclavian artery often produce a neurovascular symptom. Uh, okay, so mean that the cervical ribs uh, will cause a problem. The lumbar ribs usually causing no problem. Okay. So uh, this problem is uh, actually is due to whenever the cervical ribs is putting a pressure on the brachial plexus or subclavian artery, and it will produce this uh, symptom, the neurovascular symptom. And the other uh, condition that you have to know, the congenital anomaly, is a chordoma. Okay, uh, the chordoma is associated with the remnant of the notochord. Okay, notochord usually is not uh, persist right. Okay. The coloma is due to the remnant of the notochord may persist. Okay, may persist, persistent of the remnant of the notochord. Okay, and give rise to the coloma. Yeah. Occur at the base of the cranium and in the lumbar sacral region. Few patients survive longer than five years. Okay, should be the coloma is not persist, but sometimes it persists. Mm. And it happened at the base of the cranium and the, in the lumbar sacral region. Okay, you can see here, this is the uh, spina bifida due to the failure of fusion of neural arch. Okay, okay spina bifida occulta, spina bifida with the meningeal cell. Okay, meningitis is protruding out. Okay, this is the spina bifida cystica, lah, two types. Eh? And then the spina bifida uh, with the meningeal myelocells. cells. Okay. okay, this is the spina bifida cystica. It's protruding out from a cyst okay, at the back. And the spinal bifida cystica, meningeal myelocell, okay, the meningitis is protruding out. Okay, sorry, uh, meningeal myelocells, uh, the meningitis and also the, uh, the, the neural tissue or spinal cord is protruding out. Okay. And then this is the uh, rhychisis, okay, failure of fusion of the neural tissue. Okay, like I see. Okay, the folded of the neural tissue. Lah. Later, the, the neural tissue will become folded. Lah. And this is the right eye cyst, kind of fusion of the neural tip. Okay, this is the normal vertebral column. So now we come to the end of the lecture. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the lecture. Okay, this lecture is very easy to understand, and I hope you can memorize all the facts that I have discussed just now. Okay, I that I have uh, uh, that I already give to you all the facts that I already give to you. Please memorize it. Okay, please remember it. Okay. Oh yeah, and we have another picture, the scoliosis. So you can see here, this is the scoliosis. Okay, result from the hemi vertebral, the lateral curvature of the spine. Okay, so you can see here, it is not straight, right? Become curve. Okay. Hmm. This is just the same picture that I have to, uh, showing you just now in the early part of my lecture. It's not, okay. Okay. Oh, we have another picture. Okay. Uh, this is a cervical ribs. Okay, cervical ribs. You can see here cervical rib, hmm? accessory ribs that happen at the cervical region. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Okay.